is a period in which we allocate about 30 minutes for members of the public to make comments. These are, would be comments about things that are not on tonight's agenda. We have our regularly scheduled meeting at 5.30, so if you're here to discuss something on that agenda, we would ask that you hold your comments until that time. Welcome, and thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I want to thank the um, rest of the school board for allowing me this opportunity to address you during this public time. Um, my name is Laurie Cardoza-Moore. I'm the president of Proclaiming Justice to the Nations. And we have an educational nonprofit organization trying to educate um, people, the public, about the rise of anti-Semitism. I also serve as a special envoy of the United Nations, where my duty, my role there, is to also address human rights abuses as it pertains to anti-Semitism. So I had a parent contact me um, last week regarding content that she found in her child's C Palms curriculum. And I have to tell you, I'm very concerned. We've been fighting anti-Semitic content in textbooks um, all over the country. And Madam Chair, it's frightening to see the rise of anti-Semitism and to see this content, once again, show up in our children's curriculum. But never would I have expected here in Orlando, in Orange County. Um, we have a large Jewish population. Our organization is primarily Christian, but we also, as Christians, are deeply concerned about the rise of anti-Semitism and how this content is, is fueling the anti-Semitic incidents that are occurring on our public school campuses, K-12. I am here to ask you to plead with the board to please review the C Palms curriculum and remove the, the anti-Semitic content from our children's schools in order to protect our Jewish students. I would also like to mention that this, the 1964 Civil Rights Act provides for Jewish students as well. And if Jewish students do not feel safe on our school campuses in our community, then it, it warrants an investigation into whether the school or the district is in violation of that their Civil Rights Act. When the parent came to me and expressed her concern from her son, you're going to hear from her in just a moment, when she shared with me that her son was afraid when he got into the car that day that she picked him up. That is clearly proving to me that Jewish students, he's not, he can't be the only one who read the same content in the, text, in the curriculum, feels intimidated and unsafe in Orange County schools. Thank you so much for your Thank time. You. Thank um, you. Before we hear from future uh, additional speakers, just so that Mr. Rodriguez and um, Ms. Uh, Dr. Vasquez are aware of the situation, I'm not sure if you were copied on the emails. I think most of the board members were. I know I received an email about this. If, if I'm not mistaken, I sent it to you, yes. and you might, you all might clarify this. Um, I believe it is one of our charter schools. I say our charter schools because they are under the statute. They are part of the school system. They're a part we don't have a lot of control over. So when we get done with these comments, I want to let everybody speak. When we get done, I'm going to turn um, to, to both uh, Dr. Vasquez and as well as um, our counsel, Mr. Rodriguez, in terms of providing a little bit of input, if possible, to the board if we have. Madam Chair, yeah. please um, correct me if I'm wrong. Is, are the C -Palms, is the C Palms curriculum used in public schools? That is a great question. So. Um, Especially in Orange County. Okay. And thank you for that question. And as a new board member, I can't answer that, but we're going to get an answer in just a minute. But why don't we hear from each thank of you yes. first, rather than, is this, pardon? Is that all right? Do you want to answer that right now? Do you want to let these, I think we'd rather hear and let you all speak to, to each issue and give you an opportunity, and then Dr. Beck will. Okay. Hi, I'm Wendy Nissan, and I have not seen you, Chairwoman, since I was a Starter Studio Company. We met you in those days. It's been a few years. Um, it was my son who got in the car a couple weeks ago, visibly disturbed, I will say. And he, I said to him, what happened? And he said, you will not believe what we had to read in school today. This is not part of the charter school curriculum. This is not part of anything to do with the charter school. They were doing this in preparation for the Florida Standards Assessment. So the Florida Standards Writing Exam was going to be the next day, and they finished their preparations a bit early, and the teacher realized that she had a little bit of chunk of time and wanted to prepare them for the Florida Standard Reading Exam for freshmen. So she very quickly went onto the CPOMS website, clicked on one of the standards that needed to be taught, which was cultural experiences, and printed up these excerpts and gave it to the ninth graders to read. 
So this is not anything to do with charter schools, and my charter school handled it phenomenally. They were very upset this happened and took care of it, and I have no issue. This is, this is a Florida state issue. Every single ninth grader in the entire state of Florida potentially read these. I don't know if everyone has a copy. We'll make sure that you all do get a copy. But the first excerpt goes on about a 15-year-old boy who has learned that when he stopped, that he is not supposed to say that he's Pal Palestinian, he's supposed to say he's Lebanese, or he'll be shot right in the head, just like poor Jamal. And Jamal's mother is hanging over him in the ditch where his dead, lifeless body is lying. That's the nice one. When I'm going to excerpt two, where the poor little young Palestinian girl says, there is death among us. There is death everywhere. We all know we're not going to live out our lives. We stand in front of things and decide that will be our coffin. And so-and-so picked out their coffin, and look, next he's dead, and we got to use that for his coffin. There is death everywhere, even among us. Besides the fact that this was for inference, and clearly the only inference you can make is that Israel is mass killing innocent Palestinians. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure what else you can infer from that. But besides the fact that the excerpts are fictional, it doesn't say anywhere that these are fictional, there's no context. They're not, there's not a counterpoint. They, in just a random reading preparation for the FSA, the kids are left with this hanging notion of anti-Semitism and violence. And there's no place for this in our curriculum. I'm not getting questions. Um, we're not, uh, we're gonna try to just let Dr. Mm -hmm. Vespas answer your question. I do owe, owe you an apology. I was under the impression this was just um, in a charter school. So I think we're gonna get clarification, but. No, this is, this is only used because it was in preparation for the Florida Standard Assessment. Yeah, and so we'll the get more clarity. I, my mistake yeah. from reading the, the emails right. that transpired. I, no, I know, I, and I was referred back, but it's, yeah. it's not a charter school issue. This is a Florida State issue. Thank you. All right, absolutely. Thank you. I'm Sharon Burnight, and I have a granddaughter that I'm very, very concerned. She's in eighth grade. She lives on Dixie and Summerland in Winter Park. She goes to Maitland Middle, and she will be going to the ninth grade center in Winter Park High School next year. And I'm just here to represent this issue as a very, very concerned grandparent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Uh, thank you for letting me speak. Uh, my name is Alan Corman, and I wanted to make you all aware and ask that you replace these anti-Semitic excerpts of a fictional book that is currently being taught in the ninth grade Florida reading FSA on inference and cultural experience. These excerpts, which I mentioned a little bit earlier and which y'all were all emailed um, those excerpts, they were taken from a novella written by uh, Faki Hanabi Diana Bader titled A Land of Stone and Time, a fictional book. Quote, on the way, one of them stopped him and asked, Lebanese or Palestinian? Palestinian, Jamal answered, a bullet to the head, just like that. She was a mother, the mother of Jamal, who lay stretched out in the road as if asleep or in a faint. She couldn't stop by him either. We went on, everyone totally <coughs> stunned. I don't have any clear memory of it. Death, over, over us all. Excerpt two goes on and is even more compelling than the first. Everyone expected death. No one in Tal al Zatar thought to live out their natural life. A moment later, a splinter of shrapnel struck him in the back and killed him on the spot. So they did put him in the coffin. He measured himself for earlier. I'm amazed, I've never been injured myself. It was like a dream. You talk to someone and an hour or two later you'd hear they were dead. Nada, a friend of mine, was killed by a sniper, and she was a volunteer nurse. Death reached even her. This is for an FSA reading assessment on inference and cultural experience. These books, these excerpts are taken from is an anthology of made-up short stories from Palestinian authors biased views of the 1982 Lebanese-Israeli war. The horrible imagery somehow made through the state standards, but it is not appropriate for our children. I can see by the stunned faces on people here the words that I had spoken. 
As the Orange County School Board, you have the authority to replace these violent, dark, and fictional excerpts with something more suitable than the factual educational foundations. I have read through the related benchmarks and many other choices are available. In this case, the Orange County School Board has the authority to act locally for the good of our children and to do better than this dark, violent, made-up stories when there are so many other more educationally appropriate materials available. The fact is, in this case, you have the obligation of school board members and the authority to exchange bad content for good content. The question is, will you do it? There are a lot of people here today and others who couldn't be here that will be actively watching how this issue is resolved. And I want to thank you and have a great week, and I hope that this issue will be on the agenda at the next board meeting. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for being here. Members of the board, my last card is from Donna Render. Hi, I'm Donna Render. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak. I am Jewish, I'm a taxpayer, and um, I've been hearing about the textbook issue for many months now. I've been paying attention to what's happening in Newton, Massachusetts, which is very similar to what we're having here. Um, the excerpts that were read are just not an aberration. I have a friend who is an Orange County school teacher. I think she teaches fourth grade, and she has taken a lot of time to go through the sea palms, um, you know, all of them. And uh, unfortunately, she couldn't be here today. She's actually a little intimidated to speak up because she's afraid of losing her job. But she says she could pull out so much of the anti-Semitism and whatnot. She, she says it's so widespread. And the, the thing that's alarming is I'm sure that most of you aren't even aware of it. And it's been going on for years, and it's very subtle because they keep introducing more and more of this kind of content. And we're just unaware of it because who's reading our kids' textbooks? So I think it's just so important that everybody involved with the school board and selecting that we open our eyes, that we investigate, and we really pay attention to what's in our kids' textbooks and make sure that we get rid of all this anti-Semitism. Thank you. Thank you. So, Dr. if you can provide some guidance to the board. I know um, I have received, I think most everybody did, um, a copy of, perhaps not Dr. Uh, uh, I don't know, Member Castor Dental did. No. No? Okay. And it was based on that that I, for some reason, thought that this was a selection um, chosen by a charter school. So help us out in terms of the, um, the policy, how we deal with these types of issues. It's not you, it's the speaker. No. Yeah. Madam Chair, as one of the speakers referenced, CPOMS is a Florida collaborative platform that is um, at the DOE. It is a resource that is available to anyone that can access CPOMS. Uh, we will direct our staff to review what we have put out to our teachers with regards to resources to teach the standards to ensure that the material that is referenced uh, is not derogatory, uh, that is not culturally responsive. Our team works with the Minority Achievement Office, uh, Dr. Lawson, who is in the back and will be uh, able to speak with you to ensure that the materials and supports that we provide to our teachers through our curriculum resource materials is culturally responsive. Um, in addition, we have, I believe, Dr. Schuler and Mr. Bixler who oversee our curriculum department that would like to be able to get more specific information regarding the standards so that we can cross-reference that with our materials. Well, how, how do you address even a teacher in the district who doesn't even feel comfortable going forward for fear of losing her job. Is there a way to have an anonymous drop box or something where teachers can highlight so what's let me, going let me on? Let interject just so that we, we can maintain our rules here. So it's okay. Um, let's take, that's a great question. The question is about how do we make sure that our teachers feel that, the, that they are allowed, permitted, encouraged to come forward with concerns that they have. And I think that that we have how many thirteen thousand how many fourteen thousand teachers 
Yes. Um, we have 196 schools directly under control. It's important that all of our schools have the same culture of openness and of um, a, a culture where we encourage communication. <coughs> That's easier said than done with 196 different schools. But um, and I think it's probably um, broader than our conversation we can have here, but it's certainly something that I have heard each member of the board at different times raise that issue of wanting to make sure that we have a very open um, culture of communication from our teachers in particular. So um, I would ask maybe offline that you have a conversation uh, with Dr. Vasquez and members of her and Dr. Jenkins' um, team about how we try to work to encourage that more open communication. Um, let me share with you, my husband is Jewish, I'm Catholic, um, and I very much, I think the whole board appreciates the importance of guarding against a return of anti-Semitism, if, if I could say return, because it's always been here, but we certainly don't want to see a resurgence. I'm glad you brought this issue to our attention. Um, as a parent of a student in middle school and right after Columbine, I brought a book to the attention of the school board, ironically. Um, it was a fictitious book, but it was about a child who had been um, bullied and abused and how he retaliated. And um, I'm pleased to say that the school board took the appropriate action, and um, I'm, I'm confident in the leadership that we have here in Orange County Public Schools through our superintendent and Dr. Vasquez to take the appropriate action in this case.